Amish, you're the adult in the room. What is the importance of the World Health Organization being in Wuhan? The importance is that we still don't understand the origin of this virus. We know what happened uh, in the early days, but we don't know completely when it started. We don't actually understand which animal this jumped from into humans. There is a lot of transparency questions, and, and I do think an independent investigation to try and understand what happened completely in those early days, even before the virus was identified, is very, very important because there's going to be another coronavirus outbreak. There's going to be another emergency, and we need to learn from this one mm -hmm. in order to prevent this from happening again. Does the new variants in the fears of various and sundry variants, does that fold back onto our knowledge of what happened in Wuhan? Not particularly, because the variants were going to occur no matter what happened, because this is a virus that mutates, all viruses mutate, and lots of different variants have been spun off since the very beginning. It's only a few that have reached kind of the headline status because they changed the function of the virus, made it more transmissible or made it a little bit more of a problem for, for vaccines. But the variants themselves just are what we would expect with any virus. The origin is a different issue. It's trying to understand what the intermediate animal was. So for SARS, it was the civet cat. For Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, it's camels. We don't know yet what it is for, for this virus. Amish, what, what does it mean for vaccines? I mean, how quickly can you adapt a, a, a vaccine to actually deal with the, the variant? Actually, using the vaccine platform technologies that are exemplified by the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines, it's very easy to update the vaccine. They basically just have to, to make some changes into the code and you can basically have a new vaccine. That's the elegance of these mRNA vaccine platforms. They really are, are so easy to kind of plug and play. So I don't have a, any kind of concerns about not being able to update the vaccine. The question will be, do we need to do it? And I think we need to get more data specifically on the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines versus the South African variant, because it does seem that while Johnson & Johnson, Novavax, and AstraZeneca have some problems stopping symptomatic disease. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines may be a little bit different using a different technology. And also, it's important to remember that even with these variants, our vaccines are very robust at protecting against what matters, serious disease, hospitalization, and death. Amish, when you look at, you know, some of what's been happening in Europe, which is, the, the, you know, first of all, they're looking at various uses, for example, the first shot with one vaccine, the second shot with another. I mean, in combining some of these vaccines, could they actually be more efficient? That is the open question. We know that each vaccine works a little bit differently, stimulates your immune system in a separate manner. And could you kind of have a mix and match combination that's better than just using one vaccine? So I do think it's important to do these studies to optimize the ability of our immune system to fight off this, this uh, virus. I think it's also important that it be done in a controlled fashion and not just be done kind of without any insight into what's going on biologically. So I do think that, that the results of these trials are going to be important and may guide the future vaccine policy that we, we have against coronavirus. If you're joining us, Sam Eshadalja with Johns Hopkins University, as we see the World Health Organization in China delicately having a press conference. Amish, Johns Hopkins has all sorts of relationships with China, and you are in health security. Do you have an estimation of what Beijing wants out of this press conference, what Beijing wants out of the science of Wuhan? My my speculation would be that Beijing wants not to be uh, not to be surprised, not to be embarrassed, to be to get basically a, a stamp of approval from the World Health Organization, and I think this is one of the concerns people have had a long for a long time with the World Health Organization in China, that we may not get a fully independent investigation. Remember that this is now over a year since the virus appeared. There was massive lack of transparency uh, that happened early on regarding person-to-person -person spread. They persecuted doctors who, who uh, announced the, the virus on, on bulletin boards and chat boards on, on the Internet. So I think they don't want any of that to be brought up, and they want to be told that they did everything right. And I think that's why we probably need to have an independent investigation that is completely objective. But we may still never know exactly what happened in those early mm -hmm. days, because it's very hard to tell what, what would have happened there. And they had a lot of time to be able to massage the story a little bit. And I don't think it's something nefarious, but I think it's something that is going to be very hard to completely ascertain. <laughs>